All right, so uh, this week we're talking about second language acquisition. This is a natural follow-on from last week's stuff in first language acquisition. Uh, as usual, in this video, I'm going to recap what happened last week, preview the material we're covering this week, and remind you of some stuff that's coming up in the schedule. So last week we looked at first language acquisition, that's chapter 10 of the textbook. Uh, you also wrote the second quiz, which covered sociolinguistics and psycholinguistics. Those were our first two modules with a strong focus on research methods. Now, um, on to this week. Uh, of all the topics we've covered, uh, this week's topic is the first that directly applies to non-research jobs. There's lots and lots of people out there who work in the field of language teaching, teaching English or some other language to children or adults who already speak some other language. Uh, for this module, which uh, is uh, covered in chapter 11 of the textbook, uh, we look at second language acquisition from three main perspectives. Uh, first, we meet the basic concepts and terminology, things like interlanguage, L1, L2. Um, also in this first section is a map of the different types of competence that are important to language learners, from grammatical competence to sociolinguistic competence and a bunch of others. Uh, so take a minute. Uh, I, I think it would be helpful if you take a moment and, and pick various pairs of competence that are identified there. And for each pair, uh, think what it would be like for a learner to have one type of competence but not the other. And then maybe have that one but not that one and mix it up. It's an interesting way to sort of get your head around these different uh, aspects. Um, we're also reminded in the chapter that competence isn't an on and off switch, but it's a skill or a behavior that swings back and forth along the path to fluency. Right? As you're getting better, you'll have you know some good moments and some bad moments. Uh, it speaks to a lot in learning things, but in this case, uh, learning a second language. Uh, after this, there's a section that discusses various particulars of the interlanguage, that sort of state of between not knowing anything and, and being relatively fluent in a second language. All right, so in the first part of this, uh, we look at phonology. We again meet that recurring concept of markedness, uh, and this is deployed to help us think about some of the hypotheses regarding second language acquisition. Then we look at syntax, and we look at how, might pe how people might be learning to structure their phrases and sentences differently in the second language compared to their first language. And there's an interesting subtlety in the subset principle that we're, we look at. It turns out to be very important in the learning process. So definitely dig into that subset principle. It's, it's kind of interesting. Um, in the section on morphology, we get a direct comparison between the order of acquisition uh, of morphemes in L1 and L2, specifically talking about learning English. Okay. Uh, and that and why there might be differences there, right? So after the discussion of particular grammatical properties of interlanguage, we look at some factors that generally affect second language acquisition. Uh, key considerations that are explored include age, personality, and types of motivation. Uh, finally, the chapter looks at different approaches to second language to to, to teach. <laughs> finally, the chapter looks at different approaches to teaching second languages. Uh, this includes particular classroom strategies as well as broader policies on bilingualism and immersion. And it closes by noting, noting some of the evidence-based benefits of bilingualism. And I sort of plug there. Uh, so uh, the material from last week and this week, uh, that's first language acquisition and second language acquisition, it's going to be tested in the third graded quiz, which is next week on Tuesday, March 9th. Uh, the practice quizzes are now both available, so first and second language acquisition practice quizzes. So once you've gone through the material in the textbook, please try out those practice quizzes, get a sense of what you might need to work on and, and how the, the quiz might be uh, structured. All right, as usual, it's going to be different questions, but the same mix of long answer and short answer or, or multiple choice questions, uh, the same overall scope, about 10 points, uh, on the graded quiz for first language acquisition and 10 points for second language acquisition spread across however many questions it takes to build up that much. Um, we have our usual tutorial on Thursday afternoon starting at 5 p.m. Alberta time. And I want to note that uh, after week eight, 
double check. Yes, on March 14th, there's a time change in Alberta. So if you're in a different time zone, uh, note that after week eight, the, the difference in times between Alberta and where you are may be may, may move by an hour. So pay attention for that. Um, so yeah, that's it for this week's video. Go through chapter 11 of the textbook, try out the practice quizzes, uh, come along to the tutorial on Thursday if you can. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.